Maven says, how can psychological material theories of cyclical history be reconciled with spiritual and religious theories? Well, I, I would say the spiritual and religious theories and the psychological theories are the same, ultimately. Um, they're the same. The spiritual, the, all of the, there is no religious theory, by which I mean all of these guys, even Toynbee, right? When, he's, when, when they're talking about religion, they're not talking about any specific religion or religion as it exists now in the Catholic Church or in some Protestant church or whatever. They're talking about this spirit of like the original guys who followed Muhammad type spirit, right? Unimaginable to us. They're talking about people who just like believe in magic almost. Now we can't do that because we were born in the ashes. We're cynical. We we are materialist. We we cannot embody. You know, you're not gonna with the best will in the world. You're not gonna make you a kind of seventh century jihadi or crusader or you know Roman uh, Roman legionnaire or something. You, you're not gonna be able to get back to that. Um. Their point is, is that in the conditions after collapse, those sorts of men rise again. You can't manufacture them, though. You can't make them out of the winter. They have to come in the spring. Um, so that's what they, when they're talking about spirit, <clears throat> really they're talking about that. Now, that spirit is often afforded by a religion, okay? But to those religions become merely temporal. Toynbee, Toynbee describes them as the, uh, what does he call it? The idealization of the ephemeral institution. Okay. This is the difference between somebody who has been touched by Christ, right? And who really feels it. And they're kind of just like, they're at one with the spirit of the Lord or something. And they really believe it. And they're ready to, do anything in the in the name of of the Lord, okay? Versus somebody who's kind of into their church. They're into like the Catholic hierarchy or something. They're into protect like you know organizing meetings and this sort of stuff. This is not what these guys have in mind. These guys have in mind the first thing, and I think that the distinction between those two things are very difficult for people to get their heads around um, in an age as bankrupt as ours, basically, because, you know, it's difficult to understand. So, um, um, Frozen says, who got the most predictions correct? Um, honestly, all of them get a lot of predictions correct. Uh, Spengler's hit ratio is pretty good. Glub gets a hell. I mean, Glub is scary. Glub, Glub is just like Glub gets everything right. But you've got to remember, Glub was writing in 1978, so you know he, he's closer to us. Um, Sorokin gets a lot of things right. You know, so, Sorokin's so weird. He has this is massive book full of tables and stats and like, oh, I'm doing serious sociology, and then he'll go on like a ten page rant in the same book. It's like, what is this? I mean, they're amazing, the rants that Sorokin goes on, but it's just like, this is a bit strange, you know. Peter in, uh, is it normal for sociologists to go on 10-page rants? <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're, they're epic. They really are epic. Um,